praise God. Come on, give the Lord a great big shout of praise. Would you do that? Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Oof. I enjoy coming to this church. How about you? I was looking around for another one. Couldn't find one as good as this, Mike. <laughs> Not really. Why would I go anywhere? God, God is here. That's all that matters, right? Look around the room, smile real big at somebody, wave at them. Tell them a church alive is worth the drive. Come on, tell somebody else a church alive is worth the drive. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for thankful that you're here today. I want to welcome our YouTube audience again. We're not live streaming at this point. We will again resume again at some point, but uh, you can go on the website and watch the videos. Uh, we want to welcome you to LifePoint Christian Faith Center here in the city of Coralville, Iowa. We are temporarily located at 1221st Avenue, 1221st Avenue in the city of Coralville at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center. We're here every Sunday at usually 930 reason why I say that is because on 940s we have a special session and then we start our services at 10 o'clock and you're more than welcome to come. On the first Sunday of the month, which has been pretty cool, we have uh, times of refreshing service for those of you that want to come out. Maybe your church doesn't have Sunday evening service. We only do it once a month and we do it on the first Sunday of every month. You're welcome to come out. Very casual service. Uh, you can find out more on our website, LifePoint with an E, CFC.com. But we're thankful that you tuned in. We're certainly delighted that God has inspired you to even seek first the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness. A lot of people don't do that and they don't get that, but we're glad that you've tuned in. So we encourage you to get something to write with, take some notes. This morning, we've got a guest speaker all the way from Crete, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. Amen. And so we're going to get this individual up before you so you can be blessed. For our first time guests, I want to make sure that I send a shout out to you. Thank you so much. I don't know how many I can't have my glasses on, so I look and I see some first time faces. Thank you so much for coming. You're not a first time. How you doing? Good to see you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming in. If this is your first time as a guest, we don't call you visitors. We call you guests. You know why? Because guests can have the run of the fridge. Visitors just get to stop at the door. Okay. Yeah, y'all get that. Y'all get that later. Amen. But if you're a guest in my house, it's all yours. You can have as long as you don't go in my bedroom. We all right. But one thing about God, God, you let God let you come into the inner court, doesn't he? And the, and the most holy place. Come on, somebody. All right. Anyway, glad you're here this morning. Would you give our, our YouTube audience and our first time guests a warm welcome? We thank you for attending service with us today. Amen. If I put my glasses on, maybe I can uh, recognize some faces a little bit better. But I'm not preaching this morning, even though I feel like it. But I want to introduce to you. Uh, how many of you were at the men's men's stakeout yesterday? Hoo ha! Hoo ha! Hoo ha! It was good. It was good. It was good. We had fun. We had a, we had a preacher in the backyard, man. <laughs> His dude was, you know, Pastor Al, you were preaching. My wife was upstairs. She said she didn't even hear you. My neighbor next door said, and, and I live, in, I, we live in a duplex, so I mean, I, it's kind of hard, Pastor Jackie, not to be able to, your husband was preaching. I got some good video. Did y'all enjoy him yesterday? He was, he was just getting warmed up, but he was just getting warmed up for today, and I don't want to, and for those of you, if you're not familiar with our setup here, we do have offering baskets here. We're not going to solicit an offering this morning, uh, just because, now, normally I would, I would just tell you how important it is to give. Normally, I would tell you that you are blessed by sowing because sowing precipitates reaping. A lot of people want to reap, but they don't sow. And there's a spiritual law that, that doesn't allow that. The devil's not going to allow you to just reap and not sow. Not going to happen. I better talk to this side because I ain't saying that. But with that being said, I'm going to just trust that by the leading of the Holy Spirit, these baskets are here for you. You can go ahead and place your offerings in there. And you can walk, I say this for Pastor Al's benefit, those of you that are the life pointers know, they walk up and just will from time to time grab communion and put an offering in the basket. So you can just keep on preaching. But uh, I, get the, I get the great honor. I love this because my wife and I are going to be traveling on this coming week. And, uh, you know, when you get up here and preach, how many of you, how many of you have... Uh, are consistent preachers in here. You have a, I don't know, you have a, a platform, a place you preach at least once a week. Would you raise your hand? How many? One, two, three. No, well, she said the social media account. I'm talking about the physical, physical exertion of preaching. I pray, it, it does in a way, because I pray on Wednesdays, right? 
And by the time Wednesday's over, uh, Wednesday morning and then Wednesday evening when we preach, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. So I encourage anybody, anybody volunteers, anybody, any volunteers? You got any volunteers today to preach? All you got to do is let me know. Look, if you're going to get used, this is the place to get used. Y'all know I will use anybody. As long as you call. As long as you call. We had, uh, real quick, we had a, a, a story that goes on from Azusa Street. Anybody ever know anything about Azusa Street and the, yeah. and the revival that took place? There was a sister, that they, they described this testimony. There was a sister that sits about where Brother Paul is sitting. And depending on the basis of how big the, 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 the uh the, auto, the arena or the livery stables, what it was, was various preachers would come from all around the country because there was revival going on and they'd stand up and preach. And what would happen is that, anybody ever heard this story? Nobody? Seriously? What, this is a true story. What would happen is the sister would start close to the back and she'd move up. And she'd move up a little bit more as the preacher was going. And, it, and the story is told that if she made it up to the pulpit and you were still preaching, you need to sit down because she didn't get nothing out of it. Because she was trying to get something out of it from the entire time that she started in the back. So she would, she would start creeping up. This is a true story. She would start creeping up. And if she stopped, she was, it was a signal. Now, you can say what you want, but that's what, that, that kind of stuff used to happen. So the reason why I'm saying that is because, you know, when you preach, you preach under the unction and the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that how can they preach except they be sent? And so what we do, and we've got various giftings. Last week, how many of you here, were here last week and enjoyed the presentation of all these tag team preachers that we had, right? Yeah. It was different. It was different, but it sure was good. We had a great time in the Lord. And, and so now we have the opportunity because my wife and I are traveling. I asked by the leading of the Lord for him to come in and fill in for me today. Uh, he is Pastor Al Wilson, his wife, Pastor Jackie. Pastor Jackie, would you stand, please? She's so lovely. Would she stand up? School teacher from Chicago, Illinois. And oh, God, we pray great grace on you for being a school teacher and doing it for so long at an excellent level. We are delighted for you. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. And so we're delighted. Yeah, give her a hand. You can do that. But Pastor Al serves as the senior pastor of Spirit of Faith Kingdom Center in Crete, Illinois. We've been down there, had opportunity to go hang out down there, and he fed me the best barbecue I've had in years. Straight up, it was really good. Anytime you want to go back, who said straight up? Yeah, you know that. And it's straight up. Straight up. Some of y'all catch up with us later. Y'all, y'all smile a little bit. This is a fun place, but this is a holy place. You can be holy and still have fun with Jesus, amen? But I want Pastor Al to come up here. I want to give him as much time as he needs. I'm going to welcome up here, and I'm going to ask you what we do typically, and we've done this for years here and all my growing up life. When a ministry gift comes before you, we ask you to just stand in honor of the gift and the, and the gift giver that's on the inside of them. Would you welcome none other than Pastor Al Wilson, Wilson Spirit of Faith Kingdom Center, Crete, Illinois. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Lift your hands with me if you can think of anything good that the Lord have done for you. And you're not ashamed of it. With your hands up, lift it. Throw your head back, tell him thank you. Isn't he a good guy? He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Tell him thank you. Oh, God, he woke you up to see another morning. Isn't he wonderful? Thank you, Lord. Father, thy word now that will come unto us and arrest every un. Invited force to be arrested and taken off the premises and let your free Holy Spirit flow through this place. Anoint these lips of clay that I may speak as I ought to and fill believers with the Holy Ghost and fire. Let it be a time, Lord, that they get the unexpected and get something down in them that can't go nowhere. Lord, fill them with the Holy Ghost and God with the evidence of being a witness of your glory. Heal sick bodies and put money in their pockets. God, let them find wealth, create ideas, open up businesses for them. God, do it because you can and do it because you're still God and because. Size you, there is no savior. And God let you, the people be edified and let the devil be horrified 
And thou, O Lord, be glorified in Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' wonderful name. Turn around there and look at somebody and say, I believe you're going to get a miracle today. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. Amen. Amen. Oh, what an honor. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. All right. It's an honor. I'm telling you. Now, let, let me just say this. Uh, and I've only, I, I never thought I'd get a chance to say this here. But I'm telling you, uh, our, you are blessed. Uh, I'm not just saying that now. So you see, some of y'all think people just say stuff. I don't just say stuff. I, I tell it the way it is. I say what's good and stick to it. You are blessed, Iowa, to have two of the most gifted is people in the body of Christ to serve with you. I'm telling you. And, and they're the same everywhere you see them. The love couple. Boy, I'm telling you. Hey, 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 hey. Love, love don't go nowhere because you get anointed. <laughs> oh, somebody lift your hands and say, love don't go nowhere. And, and he's such a beautiful man of God. And I'm telling you, him and his wife were, had, is an answer to me and my wife prayer after coming out of a whole lot of bad situations and running in contact with people, say folks, and then people that say folk hurt you up and cut you up and then they look at you and say, I thought you were saved. <laughs> you ever got beat up by the church folks? I, I'm talking about spiritually wounding you and then not only that, not living up to what God said they was gonna, he was going to do in them. You know, like you have folks said the Lord spoke to me. And then you have more trouble out of them after the Lord spoke to them. Oh, Lord, I must be in the... Well, let, let me just see if any of the brothers in here for I... Oh, there go one of them over there. I see Brother Mike right here. So, so, so I want to enjoy you, Iowa. I, I want to enjoy you. And I want to tell you, thank you for allowing us to uh, come and be a part of this great, great outpouring that the Holy Spirit is doing here at Life Point. Now, now some of you was, was listening to the, to the sister up here, and she talk about that soaking. <laughs> Soak me, Lord. I don't know about you, but I need soaking. See, some people think they don't need God to soak them, and they just want to take things on out of their own intellect. And you run into the wrong church, folks. You're going to wish you had a soak. Look at somebody and say, soak me, Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pastor Tommy and, and his wife, they did something for me and my wife that we wrote down. And we was not going to back up off it. At a faith conference, we wrote down we want to sit at the table with men, uh, men and women of God that love God and have a heart for ministry. And we ain't want to sit nowhere else. And guess what? I come up in there, ain't no other seats in the, in the, in the, <laughs> in the fellowship hall. And here go this big guy up in here and his wife. And I said, oh, boy. I said, I don't know if he's going to let me sit there. He said, kick that seat out. Sit right here, brother. <laughs> he kicked that seat out. Sit. He wouldn't let me go. No, no. And your wife sit right here. And set it up and was a perfect gentleman to every man and woman of God at that table. I'm telling you, this man pulled out his heart and ministered to everyone at that table. Had me crying and soaking. I said, Lord, Lord, I ain't know you was going to move that quick. I ain't know you was going to move that quick. And to hug that big brother. Woo! He said, I'm your brother. And I heard it in the spirit realm. I found my brother. That man, I call him New York, and I be hearing them preach. And you guys are so blessed. A lot of preachers quit during the pandemic. They quit. Oh, they said can't take no more. The devil didn't want. 
But uh, this young man and wife, he's focusing on the word and get on that social media and preach against the works of the devil and pray for the sick. And, and, and when, our son was, when our son was in ICU, I'd call for the saints. I didn't fool around with folks that didn't know how to pray. I, hey, will you put my son on your prayer list? I love it. And then they start talking in tongues. I said, oh, God. Oh, God. I got, oh, he's going to be all right. He's going to be all right. Why? Because they were speaking mysteries in the realms of the spirit. Man, you need folks know how to pray in the spirit. And can touch and agree with you and get the devil on the run. Look at somebody and say, I'm sick of this devil. Get him on the run. Oh, yeah. You can't, you can't have no church with the devil all looking you all down in your face and you're scared to lift your hand. Your head don't go back. Your tongue don't get loose. You don't feel like waving. Sometimes you got to let the devil in hell know, look, I ain't come here to play games with you. I'm going to lift my hand. I'm going to shout. I'm going to tell God how much I love him because can't nobody. God, yeah. Do me like the Lord. Lift your hands. There can't nobody. Oh, your uncle can't do you like God. You know your relatives can't treat you like God treats you. Your relatives get tired of you. And you do you change the channel on them too much. Hey, you done mess with the ball game too much. That same door that brought you in here, let it take you out of here. But God will stick with you closer than a brother. He'll never leave you alone. I'm here to tell you, can't nobody do you like God. Isn't he wonderful? Come on, I will lift your hands and say, God is wonderful over here in Iowa. Woo, nah. Now let me borrow the pulpit for a few minutes and I'm going to cut out of here. <laughs> I'm going to preach today, bro, Mike. <laughs> All right. Now over here, just for a few minutes, if you have your Bible, just for a few minutes. And I, I'm, I'm uh, an honor and a privilege, I'm telling you. And I'm going to tell all of you this, that, that you sometimes think that it's easy, that all we do is just grab a scripture and go at it we might want to do that but then then the crowds get different on you <laughs> and the holy spirit said i know them better than you i said i know you do sir i said that's why I, that's why i don't do nothing without you i wouldn't get up and preach without the holy ghost because i found out a long time ago that i didn't know what i was doing and i learned that he'll lead and guide you and he know people. And I said, Lord, give me favor with your people. Said, Let me speak a word, Lord, that can revolutionize their lives and do something for them. Can you say amen? amen. All right. In the book of Second Timothy, now, I didn't read all of it, but I'm going to today if you allow me to. Amen. Could I take my time and then get out of here in a few minutes? I don't want to preach all day now. So some of you are going to be in for a treat. If I can get these beautiful glasses the Lord bless me with. Amen. All right. In, in the traditional uh, verse, King James, it's here, uh, uh, Paul writing to Timothy. He said in the second chapter, in verse 20, I want you to underscore uh, verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and of the earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse 21, and I'm still in that King James Version at that at that peak right there where you see a 21st verse come in at, it's going to challenge you. If a man, therefore, if a man, he might not want to do this, but if a man, therefore, purge himself from what? From these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Would you mind if I said park right there for a minute? I want to say something to the Lord. Lord, I thank you. 
Yes, sir. I thank you. And I want you to work with me in these here few minutes here, and I want you to speak a word to your people. Now, in verse 22, he said, flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that are called on the Lord out of a pure heart, pure heart, a pure heart, a pure heart. But the foolish and unlearned question of boredom, knowing that they do gender strife. Now, I want to park right there for a minute and talk about honor. We did a little bit about it, and I'm telling you, it's an honor to be here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an honor to be here. Traffic was held up almost two hours before we can get out of here, we, before we could get on the expressway real good. And a thought come to me and said, won't you go around? You know how to go around that. That's okay. <laughs> I had my wife with me, and I said, well, we'll get some fuel over here at Morris. I'm going to go around this. And she said, you got enough gas in there to go around that? I had enough gas to go around it when I heard the words say go around it. Hmm? When a, when a vessel has been established with God, God don't play games with you. When he speak a word to you, he's not trying to uh, 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 well, impress you. The relationship that you build with him, you have to know his voice. In a stranger voice, you cannot follow. And once you get that and to get established down inside of your spirit, yea, do I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Because I got a word in me. Look at somebody and say, I got a word in me. Mm. See, you'd be surprised how people have took a good word that was an honorable word given to them by God and they took it and the word went in as an honor but it was sit on and became dishonorable Ooh. a lot of times people are like I don't want to hear that I was listening to a preacher one day on the word network and the preacher was talking about having uh, a $25,000 a month light bill. And he was talking like it was no big deal at all. And I was like saying, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> then he started talking about how much it take to cool down them big buildings and all them rooms that it had. And he was talking about my AC unit and they, it was somewhere in the neighborhood, $10,000 a month just to keep the place cool. And he had to also keep the right people in position that people can enjoy when they come and go into the ministry and in and out of, of the cares of the world and carry them into the church. But if the church mistreat them <laughs> when they first come in they in their mind they're saying I'm not going back there no more and there's not enough anointed people sitting among us that been soaking that can pick that devil up feeding thoughts to people like that who had to build their encouragement up just to go to church and then the devil talk them out of it and then we like, oh, the devil don't be saying nothing to me. Well, where did them thoughts come from? I thought you was going to church. I was going, well, who changed your mind? <laughs> oh, we, we see a lot of people be like, something told me, something told me. It was no something. <laughs> Somebody. And, and this is why it's so important to soak. And then soak in this word that I can be a vessel of honor. Amen. Now, the New Living Translation, watch this. Now. They, they talk about this thing real good. It said, in a wealthy home, sometimes utensils are made out of gold and silver, and some are made out of wood and clay. 
the expensive utensils are used for special occasions. <laughs> oh, oh turn around there and look at somebody and say, I'm a specialist. Oh, you don't know about me because I'm only coming out for a special occasion. I'm not getting caught up with the church crowd. I'm just going to come in and tell you what's good and stick to it. And I'm out of here. Why? Because I'm only come out doing special occasion. You got to watch out for people that are going out all the time. There's nothing special about that. But when men of God come out. When women of God come out, they're coming out to do a work on the enemy. They coming to run him right out of town. They coming to get sick bodies here. They coming to get you out of your depression. They coming to bring you from back street to front street and put a word in your spirit that you can do for yourself. That's why specialists are born. Look at these specialists around here. Turn around there and look at somebody. I see a specialist around here. Boy, God used you a special occasion. Have you ever noticed some folks you don't fool with? Some people you don't be wanting, you don't have the energy for. You don't have to get up and go about yourself. You got to learn that all of our children shall be taught of the Lord. Don't you know God know how to give you energy to go and do what God wants you to do? If the energy is not there, stay there and wait until you be filled with energy because you can't waste any energy on people that ain't going nowhere. That energy that God give you is it's not your uncle. He didn't loan you the car. This is a dynamite spirit. This is something that God give you that'll break in some of the gates of iron and bring people out of the gutter mode. People's minds are depressed because they're not coming in contact with specialists. You need specialists in your life. Look at somebody that says special utensils are used for special occasions. You don't bring out the, the, the you don't bring out the hard hitters when you're dealing with folk playing games. Come on now, Lord, could you pray for me? What, what, what am I praying for? Well, uh, my, my 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 kids and they just cussing at me and they won't take the trash out. I said, No, I'm not gonna pray for you. If any man afflicted, let him play. That sounds like an affliction in your house. That ain't something that you call the elders for. That's something you got to get up off your little do nothing seat and cast the devil out of your house. You don't call the preacher to take care of your nephews, your uncles, and your cousin. They cussing. They don't want to pick up the trash. They don't want to put no belt on. They don't, they go on a while. That's not something you call the pastor for and keep the pastor up all night. Talking about pastor, can you come help get the devil out of my house? No! If any man afflicted, let him pray. And specialists do specialist things. You lead the specialist to in their special. You pull a man out of his calling. Now he working with his hand and not his faith. He get burnt out. And then he gets around there and now that driving force that been driving him to do what God called him to do, he raised his hand and he don't feel nothing. And he said, Lord, I know you're somewhere around me, but have you ever been into a place where you've been fooling around with people that weren't specialists like you? They didn't have the anointing like you and you hung out with them so long and all of a sudden you start sounding like them. All of a sudden you start doing what they doing and God had to pull the brakes on you and say look here you done had too much of that now come on back over here and get into that soaking place well when I get ready for to send you somewhere in rain I don't want to hear no thundering I don't want to hear no lightning that people need rain and specialists bring forth that rain the rain of God word lift your hands to Lord thy word oh Lord thy word Oh, and, and, and John said, and that word became flesh and started walking down the aisle. Oh, that's the, that's, that's the work of a specialist. That's only come out for special occasion. What occasion is that, Pastor? Well, when the devil start acting up, there come the specialist. And the specialist can spot the devil real quick. Say amen to that. 
Sometimes people think you dumb, deaf, dumb, and blind. It ain't just because you don't be saying that no mean you don't know nothing. You you see the devil? Come on, baby. You got to get up early to tell a saint that they don't know what the devil is. But the problem that I have found out that saints have been doing is making deals with this devil. You don't make no deal with the devil. You're talking about if you don't mess with me, I won't mess with you. Well, they, and then they say, come on, lift your hand. The devil said, if you lift your hand, I'm going to expose you. And then you say, well, I won't lift my hand. And you sitting around there having spiritual warfare, wrestling with this devil when a word is right in front of you. All you got to do is say, Lord, send me a word. And I want to receive that word. And if you receive that word, you can say, devil, get up out of here. Get up out of my head. I'm not listening to you. All of thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. Anybody need peace in their house? Then let God teach you. Let God teach you. Let God teach you. And when I hear uh, Pastor Tommy and Lynette, Lynette teaching, I said, Lord, look at that man and woman of God. Whew, they stay on the go. They always in the presence of God and always in position for the anointing can use them those are specialists. Some folks said, I can't live no life like that. Well, you're not a specialist. Some folks said, well, I ain't going to go to no conference. I know you're not wood. I know you're not hay. I know you're not stubble. Turn around and say, I know, I know, I know, I know. But when you live a life as a specialist, there's certain appetites you have. That's certain ear, that's a certain ear you have that others don't have. And you're hungry for a word because before you can give it out, you got to be able to get it in. Ooh, somebody say amen. And also, <laughs> I love this. This, this God, the Lord also said here, said, keep yourself pure. You don't just leave special utensils out for people can just walk off with them. Uh oh. Uh, some people don't have special utensils in their home because they don't think nothing special of having a special occasion where you can sit down there and honeymoon somebody. Break out something that's real, real delicate and say, Where are we going? We ain't going nowhere. We're going to hit sit out and eat. <laughs> Candlelight them. Man, if you can see, when we go places, here's what she she's like into the interior decorating. She be robbing ideas from people and, and robbing the way things are hooked up. She said, I could have that right there. I can do this like that. I said, Oh God, how much that gonna cost? When they start going places, they start getting in your pocket. How much that gonna cost? How much that gonna cost? I learned how to appreciate that special gift that God gave me. Sometimes you can be have a special gift and fool around and let the devil talk you out of it. Say amen to this. You sometimes you can have a gift right there, a special gift. And then your family can talk you out of it. Your friends can talk you out of it. But baby, when God give you something, if God give you something, hold on to it. Because I'm telling you, it's value in it. It's a special gift. I seem like I do better when she's with me than when she's around me. Amen. Because she's a special woman. <laughs> hey Amen. I might be able to eat tonight, brother. I can eat tonight now. <laughs> oh, let me finish. Oh, God. Can, if it, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Y'all all right? All right? A kingdom mindset come out of special equipment. Out of special equipment is no more church as usual. You hear the man of God talking these terms to you? No more church as usual. And the, and the woman of God saying, soak. 
baby, when you soak in the presence of God and you get that thing down in you and to your refrigerator say thank you, Jesus, to your bathroom say hallelujah, to you walk down the hall and you hear some, a voice behind you saying this is the way, walk ye in that way. Why? Because when you soak in the presence of God, his voice become clear to you. Your car sound like him. Yeah, your neighbors will sound like him. People in the grocery store sound like him. You'll go to places, people say, hey, how you doing? And one thing I found out on the planet of Earth, that if you leave man alone, man will get along with other mankind. And everywhere all over the world, men have something in common, mankind. They see somebody that's on the uprising, and they do it like this when they see you. And God say that. let you know in a man. Man done walked in. Everything all right. I ain't, I ain't cheating on my wife. And my dog is all right. My kids ain't in jail. Everything all right. And then you have this unique black man. And everywhere he go, he's opposite. Now think about this, brothers. I'm going to teach you something today now. <laughs> Somebody said talk to me. <laughs> the black man, he kind of like got it like this. And when he see another brother, he's, he see another one. He don't care where we at. We can be in London. We can be in Europe. We can be in Trinidad, Miami. When you see a man or a woman of God and you know they ain't up for no trouble, you will do what everyone that's not up for no trouble do. They give you a salute. And this salute is say, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And a lot of times people didn't know that a man taught that to me. And I said, what? He said, that's the highest praise. He said, God will put it in your head. He said, once you learn the universal language of all people, hallelujah is the highest praise. And when someone walks in your presence and we thought that there was just something we picked up on the street. What up, though? We, that's how we thought. But that man said, when you look up, that's hallelujah. And I said, wow, I ain't never heard nothing like that before. And start, so I start doing it every time. I, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Tell me, I throw your head back, say hallelujah. And, and it became something that was the Holy Spirit say it was spiritual exercise and it was cleaning off the special utensils. Praising God cleans off special utensils. You talking about your gift work, praise him for a little while. Man, it ain't nothing like a gift that work and then it get polished up. And when you learn that you got to go back into the place where you soak before the Lord and spend some time there, you will come out of there singing that old song, this is the day that the Lord have made. And I will rejoice and be glad. Why? Because I soak. Special utensils have to be special taken care of. And you can't just do them any kind of way. I heard someone say, church not my anointing, do my prophet no harm. But what do that really mean when you have prophets that do harm to people? Thank you, sir. <laughs> prophets that do harm to people. What do you mean by that? prophets that hadn't been soaking into the presence of God. People that hadn't been spending time in the presence of God they don't know what God's up to. They don't know his precept. They're waiting on the email to get their lesson for the day. But baby when you soak in the presence of the Lord you know how to walk down the aisle. You know what the people have need of. God says sick that word on them. Put the word in you. And then when you get around a lot of people that don't want the word you be looking at them like saying how you not want this? How you not want it? And you'd be like, how do you know people don't want it? Everybody respond different. But the important part of it is, is get the word out there. Somebody lift your hand and say, get the word out there. People need money in their pockets. I sense an a anointing of wealth getting ready to come over this place, Sister Wilson. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
I told a guy down there in Mobile, he, he, boy, God blessed him so tremendously. I said, I thought you had forgot about me. He said, how could I forget about you? You the one told me God was getting ready to explode down here in the beat of the bay. And God blessed that, that ministry so tremendous that the mayor came and joined the church. The mayor came and joined. And see, when you, when you become special, you'll, you'll make special people out of other people. Because you'll dig down into them and get honor in them. Oh, Lord, let, let, let me hurry up the road here, what they say down there. You keep yourself pure, John 15. Now are you clean through the word, the word I speak unto you. You can get clean just by hearing your pastor preach. All you got to do is just sit up there and say, go on, pastor. Come on, pastor. And don't let pastor rest. Pull on pastor. He's anointed for this. You sit around there like a mop and the man's loaded. He's loaded with resources. And your faith can pull it out of him. You can draw water out of the wells of salvation. You can pull on utensils that are specialists and get things done and get rid of depression, get rid of high blood pressure, low blood pressure, get, get rid of the waiting line, get rid of all the noisy crowd and walk into a peace you ain't ever known before in your life. You in the midst of chaos. They shooting everywhere. People clowning everywhere, but it don't come near you. Yeah! Though they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord God Almighty put angels all around you to carry you into the way that he, he needs you to go. You ain't got to worry about no devil. Lift your hand and say angels. And camp around them that love the Lord. Those that respect God they ain't got to worry about nothing. Angels all around you. That's why you have some people get in accidents and man, they barely hit. Look like they didn't in the car didn't even get a damage nowhere. And everybody dead in the car. And then you find some the car flip over five or six times and they come walking out without a scratch. Somebody lift your hand and say, Angels! all around us and we as men and women of God have the ability to release angels on assignment Whew. don't mess with specialists there's all types of things down in the word of God that we can get a hold of. And then he said, in the day of evil, when there's a, uh, what they call this, a corona pandemic that is facing everywhere, everywhere you go, that people then run into a fear. And the fear of the, getting the virus is more dangerous than the virus. And you have people walking around talking about they love God and they don't even believe no more what the words say than a man in the moon. Then he said, there no plague shall come near you. If you believe it, you receive it. If you doubt it, you do without it. But I don't know about you. I believe everything God word said. Lift your hand and say, I believe God. If you believe him, lift your hands. I believe him, I believe him, I believe him. I ain't fooling around with the CNN and the news report. I'm believing the word. Who report you going to believe? Specialists cannot afford to spend time outside of the word. It's the word that keeps us clean and keep thoughts coming to us. It's the word that keeps us with something to say. And it's the word that cleans us and the word that heals us. And I'm telling you, that word can walk down these aisles. It's called the living word. It'll heal sick bodies woo, and put money in your pocket. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I feel God moving around here. I'm going to close it with this. Let, can, can I give you one note? Just one note. Keeping yourself pure ain't always easy to do when you always want to help people. Because you find yourself trying to help people and being drawn away from the place well, you need to be soaking and you spend time with people that can care less if you soak. 
Man, I'm telling you, it ain't nothing like finding men and women of God that love him. <laughs> For no other reason, I just love God. And you find yourself sometimes searching for those people. Boy, Pastor Tommy had a yard full of men of God that love him. Woo, God have mercy. They was cooking, barbecuing, and talking, and preaching. And I'm telling you, he even had some of them out there, man. I'm telling you, just, just, just testimonies about things that have been down into the year. Those are, man, men of God, we love hearing what God have done. Nobody want to hear what the devil doing. Who cares? We about to run him out of town. Somebody say amen. Now look, now turn around there and look at somebody and say, I know earlier I told you you're going to get a miracle today. But you said, mm -mm, I'm going to get this one for myself. <laughs> amen. Keeping yourself pure in the Word of God, giving time to prayer and supplication and giving some quiet time. Sometimes, man, you know, I, I didn't know that there were so many people that love fishing and, and until you start talking to preachers. Preachers know everybody that fish. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? But do you know something about fishing? This is so true. And, it, it, and, and you can take this. A pastor don't know what soul he's going to catch. But when you get him on the line, that's yours, baby. You got him in here. Now you, you, you cannot cook a fish before you clean a fish. And you can't catch a fish by throwing rocks at them. You heard that all your life, haven't you heard that? Now think about this scenario. If a pastor is also a fisherman and he said, Lord, we have toiled all night, but nevertheless, at your word, I give our a chance. And he let his net out. Him and his lovely wife, they let their nets out. And they have caught some beautiful fish in here. Somebody lift your hands. Here come a glory. Oh, glory to God. Some unique, beautiful people. Man, I, I look at this brother right here. I said, this beautiful brother sitting down eating barbecue. Eating hamburgers, eating hot dogs. Man, you know some people have health issues. They can't eat a hot dog. They can't eat chips. They can't eat good old sliced peaches. But well, my God, the yard was filled with men of God. I said, Lord, where was I just at? You surrounded by men of God. And I had told him, I said, man, I could see you. Lead men, brother. Brother, you are a sharp man of God. You can lead people. Man, they'll listen to you because you're anointed to talk what you talk. And when you say what you say, men be listening. You are anointed to draw men. I'm telling you, if this wasn't so far, I'd slip over here sometime. <laughs> yeah, I'd slip over here. Oh, man, I don't want nobody to know me. i slip over here. This brother and his wife be preaching, and I'd be like, wow. They, they're not little shadow Sunday school type stuff that you get kidding. Man, these people are rich in the word of God. It flows out of them like water. And no struggle at all. And they love people. They love people. I saw them in Texas, man, hugging with folks, man, little cowboys, ranchers. Man, they'd hug folks. I, man, you, I just, I, I was just, I was just enjoying seeing how he, how him and his wife connected with all people. I said, thank you, Lord, because I, I'm the one prayed the prayer. I said, Lord, I want to have real men of God in my life. And the Lord set me up where I can see them at work. That brother is so rich in the love of God. And I'm telling you, I know you, I know you guys know what a gift you have. But I'm going to tell you how to get more out of him. Receive him as a gift from God. And you'll never grow lacking. I'm telling you, it ain't easy to go pick up and go somewhere and take on the responsibility of preaching the gospel. You got to have a lot of anointing. 
You talk that if you want to. Go ahead. Go on, try it. Go ahead. Try it. You can go rent the Coliseum somewhere and go and try it. You think it's easy work? you got to have a special anointing to stand here flat foot and preach the word. The devil don't like that. And then God surround them with brothers that can pray. and play. Man, I didn't know he can play the piano too. Good God. God getting ready to do something. I, I stopped right here to bless the house. This is, my, this is my big brother. I, w- I want to release everything that I believe God put in me to be a blessing to this man and this woman of God because I don't tell, I'm telling you, I do not take it lightly when someone say, hey, will you come over and preach? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. I live, sleep, and eat preach. I preach all night. My wife can't sleep. And she got up and said, you know, I said, what, Shondo? <laughs> I looked at her and I said, ah, oh, she said, yeah, uh-uh. all through the night, man, because the Lord blessed us just, just recently. He put the brakes on death for our son. And, and I'm telling you, I, I was clowning uh, Sister Wilson in the hospital. And I never, ever thought I'd clown like that. But sometimes faith, faith will provoke you to do something you ain't never done before, challenging a doctor. Amen. I challenged a doctor. The doctor said, well, if I pull that tube out of him, I'm going to have to put a trait back in his throat in order for him to be able to say, he ain't going to need no trait. <laughs> he don't need no trait. He don't need no trait. I went into that room and... I close with this, and I didn't finish telling this yesterday because I paused, because sometimes the Lord is like, yes, no, now. And you have this intuition that God give you. But when I told that doctor, I sign whatever paper you want me to sign, but I want that tube out of his mouth right away. Because I already heard from the Lord. The Lord told me. I, I had people all over the world praying for that boy. I had people in New York. I, had, I met these people in ministry. And walking up right before God, he brought me in the presence of men like this and women like this. Just serving him, loving him and serving him. Brought me in contact with people in New York, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Huntsville. And I do not take lightly the special anointing that's on their lives. And I called them, text them. Uh, some of them I put in group that said, pray for me. I said, I'm believing God. To give my son a miracle. And then they start saying, right on, Pastor. We with you. We, we praying with you. And you know some of them, they praying, they praying, and they want you to give them a feedback. And I, I said, well, I ain't got no feedback to give him right now because he's still laying up in there in a coma. Not moving. And the nurses got tired of him. I said, you ain't got no business being no nurse. So how are you a nurse and you don't care about a patient? I said, I don't need you up in here with my son. Matter of fact, they don't even need you in this hospital. Why are you even in here? She just Wilson to my come, Al, Al. She pulling on me. She, she said, Al, Al. I said, no, that ain't how you, uh, nursing is a gift. You're just lady, she's just in here for a paycheck. Don't you know, haven't you been listening to the news how people are dying of COVID and how people are having to get on ventilators and people are dying all over the world and you're a nurse? And you're talking to a pastor and you're talking deaf to me like that. You're telling me my son dead. That's what you're telling me. You're saying he's dead. You're talking about his brain is dead. I said, no, it's not. <laughs> he said, well, I've been, she said, I've been doing this for 40 years. I said, I don't care how many years. You, you ain't older than God. <laughs> and then I start playing my song. I lean not on my own understanding. 
My life is in the hand of the maker of heaven. I give it all to you, Lord, trusting that you make something beautiful out of me. And I was holding his hand. I said, Malcolm, squeezed my hand. He said, I said, thank you. That's all I needed. I went on back and uh, said, oh, you can come on with that too. To bring your team on in here. They can pull this out of him. He said, we can't just do it like that. I said, oh, because he's not following prompts. I said, what prompt you want him to follow? <laughs> I said, Malcolm, you see that nurse over there in that corner? Turn your head and look at her. He went like. He, she said, that was just reflexes. That's, that, that's just his nerve jumping. And, and I said, can you please get her out of here? Please, please. And I was getting real loud. I said, please get her out of here. And Malcolm said, <laughs> Am I lying? Huh? He laying down there with a tube in his throat. And he laughing at daddy getting on them nurses. I said, now wiggle your toe right there. He wiggled that toe. I said, wiggle this one right there. Wiggle that one right there. And then the nurse said, I was in here. The, I, I, I came by early. And he was responding to all the commands. We got to take the tube out. And I'm telling you, when God said it is done, raise your hand. It is done. Boy, I'm you, the, and then you have uh, people know how to make you put that thing to work. Uh, time wouldn't permit me to tell you how a woman down there in Georgia made me put the Holy Ghost to work. <sighs> you drown there doing all that preaching, boy. I got problems. I said, what's wrong with you? She said, she, she grabbed my hand, bro, bro Mike, and she put it right here on the ocean. I was like, oh, God. I said, I never had nothing like that happen to me before in my life. A woman took my hand and put it on her breast and said, pray, boy. Pray. I said, oh, God. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I, I went way off into the, some spirit. I didn't know where I was at. But when I come down, I looked behind her, and she had this husband about this tall, and he was looking right at me. I said, she put <laughs> my hands. I, I didn't do it. She, but, but God healed that woman, <laughs> healed her of cancer, and she, she, she went back home, and, and men went in there and started cook, cooking country style. Corn cut off the cob, uh, smothered potatoes, uh, 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 candy yams, smothered chicken. And, and, and I went back to the hotel and got a knock on the door. I looked out there at that peephole, hear that big joker. It was her husband, big man, about this tall, at my hotel. I said, oh, man, that guy finna get me, boy. <laughs> I'm turning around looking for somewhere to escape and then and, 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 and have them. And, and, and he called my phone. It's, it's, you in there, preacher? I said, give me just a minute. Give me a minute. I'm trying to find something. I, I know he was coming to whoop me. I know he was going to get me. He said, Mama went to the, I opened the, eventually opened the door. He said, Mama went back to the doctor today and got a good report. All the cancer is gone, and she sent you some dinner, and I hope you enjoy it. Man, I opened up that tray. It, it had towels in it like this. 
wrapped around biscuits and cornbread. And I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. Man, I thought I died and went to heaven. Man, I'm sitting down there eating real. Said, this is the day. This is. Well, I was so, you talking about a preacher on fire? Man, that set me on fire to get a report like that. I was nervous. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. And man, that woman said, lay your hand right there, boy. Pray, boy. Pray, boy. Pray. And I said, God, do it for your glory. And she come right back and told me that, that uh, God had healed her of cancer and, and her and her husband paid me and my wife a mortgage for three months. Three months. Three months. She said, Lord, want me to give you this. I said, I can't take no more food with it. I said, oh, I'm stuffed. No, take this. And I was like, wow. God, you're amazing. And brother, I kid you not, I did not feel anything. I only did it out of obedience. Lift your hands and say, Lord, give me an obedient spirit. I don't want to compromise. I just want to be obedient. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, give me an obedient spirit. That obedient spirit, and I'm done. I'm not done, but I'm going to quit. Listen to me. Thank you so much. Listen. That obedient spirit make you a specialist when you can hear it. You'd be surprised how many people miss hearing the voice of the Lord, and they play it off like it's no big deal. <sighs> it's life to them that find it. Bow your hearts, and I'm going to pray. Say these words with me. Say, Lord, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Walk in me. Talk in me. Be my God. And let me be your child. Now, like Pastor was saying, you got to soak. Spend some time in that word. You get clean just by reading that word, man. You, all you got to do is just pick the word up and clean it, and then you have something to hit you in life. You don't know what to do. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. You get sick, call your pastor. Call him. That's why if there's any sick among you, call for your elders of the church. But if you're just having some crazy people in your life that you pick, you got to pray them out of your life. Man, you don't worry your pastor all night with the boyfriend you pick. <laughs> Yeah, he'll try it, though. I want you to stay. Brothers and sisters, I appreciate you, Iowa. I appreciate you, and I appreciate you uh, allowing me to come here today. It's an honor, I'm telling you. I want you to stand on your feet real quick. Just one more exercise, and we're going to give it back over to the pastor. Just stretch your hands out toward the Lord and say, I owe you this one. Lift your hands up real good. Say, Lord, I owe you this one. Yeah. A man taught me how to exercise praising God. I was like, wow, man, this guy was so incredible. And he was taking his leg and putting it all behind his head. And he was 70-something years old. I'm like, dude, I can't keep up with you. <laughs> but he was, a, he, was a, he was a life coach, and he was telling me some of the greatest levels of exercise. He said, ain't that a good thank you right there? He said, isn't that a good thank you? Come on, somebody give him a good thank you. Uh, you see, some of our bodies be stiff in the way. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah. And Lord, heal in this room. Heal in this room every ache and every pain. And Lord, create business ideas for these beautiful people. And, Lord, let them get on point with it, for life point can take to another level. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' wonderful name. I love you, Iowa, and I love you, and I pray that you will continue to uphold this great man and woman of God as they continue to do the work of God here, and you surrounded by great men. Oh, my Lord, this thing can explode. You guys... Have an excellent, excellent man of God right here. 
And I want you to know that <laughs> you've been blessed. And I thank you, and I love you, and I appreciate you, and God bless you.